Greetings everyone and welcome back. This is Cyber.py03, a CyberDeck theme Raspberry Pi PC that is equipped with WaveShare 7.9-inch ultra-wide HDMI display. Actually, this is another installment of my previously built Cyber.py projects, which you can check out by visiting my previous videos. First, the whole design was modeled in Fusion 360, then it was 3D printed with an Ender 3 printer in a two-color scheme. The Raspberry Pi 4 serves as this project brain, but it can be swapped with a Raspberry Pi 5 or even a lower version because of all the fittings are interchangeable and compatible with all Pi models. In this configuration, Raspbian has been loaded on this Raspberry Pi, and it may be utilized for numerous applications. This configuration is powerful and capable of running everything we throw at it, thanks to the Pi 4. For instance, Minecraft PE Edition modded is running on this setup. Installing Pi apps will allow you to add ton of programs to this setup, such as games like Doom and emulator like PPSSPP. We even personalize our Pi to look like a Mac by using a custom Mac OS theme. In order to expand the Pi 4 I.O. ports, we have to also add a USB hub to this device. Additionally, the display that we are using is a touchscreen. This design was divided into two main parts, the main body and the back lid. The main body holds the screen and the Pi setup from the inside. The exterior features a curved screen front cover part that we made after front appearance of vintage CRT monitors. To enable us to print the main body and the front face using various color of filament, we separated these two pieces and this will provide contrast to the model and improve its aesthetic appeal. The base lid part is modeled with a large opening in the middle. In this opening, we have added a grill for air ventilation. This grill part is printed from transparent PLA and the lid itself is printed with orange PLA. We have modeled two screen holders inside the main body that when installed will hold the screen and Pi assembly in its place. We also added a USB hub which is installed on the left side of the model since we cannot access the USB port on the Raspberry Pi because it was mounted in the middle. Following the design completion, we exported each component into a mesh file and then used two filaments, transparent PLA and orange PLA to 3D print every part. The ultra-wide 7.9-inch HDMI display made by Waveshare is the main component of this project. The screen is fantastic. It has 400 by 1280 pixel resolution and it is incredibly bright. By holding down the on-off button for an extended period of time, you can adjust the screen brightness. As for sourcing this display, we got it from PCBWay's gift shop. PCBWay Gift Shop is an online marketplace where you can get variety of electronics module and board for their genuine price. Or you could use their PCBWay currency which is called Beans. You get Beans after ordering something from PCBWay as reward points. Or you can get them by posting projects in their PCBWay community. Over the last 10 years, PCBWay has distinguished itself by providing outstanding PCB manufacturing and assembly services, becoming a trusted partner for countless engineers and designers worldwide. Their commitment to quality and customer satisfaction has been unwavering, leading to significant growth with expansion. You guys can check them out if you need great PCB service or other services for affordable rate and low price. With our Raspberry Pi, we are currently running Raspbian OS and the simplest method for installing this OS is by far utilizing the Raspberry Pi Imager software. After making the boot drive into the SD card, we open the config.txt file of Raspbian OS and add this following line in it. You also need to include this extra line in order to set the proper display orientation which is in our instant 270 degrees. Waveshare has made a brief wiki about this process about how this display can be used with a PC and more. Check out this project page for more details. After installing the Raspbian OS onto the SD card by using the Raspberry Pi Imager, we made required modification to the configuration file to enable the display. Everything worked smoothly after the desktop environment booted and the computer did not lag. Additionally, we have used Ethernet port to connect this device to internet and browse Chromium. To use this OS, we added a wireless keyboard and mouse to this Raspberry Pi setup. 
Also, we have used a 12 volt 4 ampere adapter as our power source, which power the Pi and the display simultaneously through the input of two DC DC buck modules. This DC DC buck module provides 5 volt 3 ampere to the display and the Pi. One final thing before we begin the body assembly process. When browsing, we noticed that the Raspberry Pi was getting hot. This was caused by heavy CPU usage, which raised the temperature of the processor significantly. Two solid copper heat sinks were installed on the processor and the Wi-Fi chip shield in order to deal with this issue. Adding heat sink will reduce the temperature and keep the processor cool. Super glue is initially applied to the main body and then the front face is positioned in its proper position to begin the assembly process. In a similar manner, we inserted the slot section from the interior of the main body and fit it properly in its place. Super glue is used to permanently attach it to the main body in order to ensure integrity. Next, we added M2.5 screw threaded insert into the hole provided on the main body. We have used a soldering iron paired with a TS100 tip adapter kit that we also obtained from PCBWay's gift shop. Using the soldering iron, pick and position the threaded insert over the hole, then push it down until it heats up and slide into place. At last, we added the DC barrel jack in its place on the main body. The display Raspberry Pi assembly is now picked up and placed inside the main body screen location. Supporting ribs are designed all around the display to keep it in its place. We use screen holders which are positioned on their proper location and then permanently fastened with two M2 screws each to hold the display in its place. Using a USB hub bare circuit that we salvaged from an outdated USB hub product, we are able to connect a mouse and keyboard to the Raspberry Pi. This hub features three USB 2.0 ports. The screen holder one has four mounting holes on it that are used to secure the USB hub circuit in its place when positioned over it. Finally, we connect the Raspberry Pi USB port to the USB hub USB cable. We installed the SPDT toggle switch next on the main body in order to cut off the power going to the DC-DC module from the DC barrel jack. We place the switch on the main body and secure it firmly using the toggle switch M5 nut. Next, we connect the DC-DC buck module's ground to DC jack's ground terminal. The positive terminal of the DC jack connects to the switch NO and the positive terminal of the DC buck module is connected to the switch COM port. With lid assembly, we simply set up the grill part on the back lid part and slide it into position by applying pressure all around its edges. We then permanently join them together using super glue. For the final assembly, we take the lid assembly and place it on the back side of the main body. Next, we secure the stand parts along with the lid to the main body using 4 M2 screws. At this point, the I.O. cover was placed on the top side and it was secured in its place using M2.5 bolts. Here is the end result of this simple build, Cyberdeck version 3, a full working PC with cyber theme that was constructed from scratch 
featuring a wide 7.9 inch touch display and a Raspberry Pi 4. For installing the Minecraft PE modded edition, we first install the Pi apps, which can be installed by using the following script. By installing the Pi apps, we manually install the Minecraft Pi edition modded from the game section. Once you install it, it should automatically launch. Although this PC performed fairly well, I would like to discuss few issues with you all. Firstly, the arrangement lack adequate cooling. If you are going to use this setup on a daily basis, we need to install an effective cooling system. Overall, this project turned out well, since the Pi 4 can handle nearly anything we throw at it. The design is extremely bright and responsive, and the end result operates as intended. If this topic interests you, you may check out some of my previous work, which can be found on my channel. A special thanks to PCBWay for supporting this project. Visit them to get a wide range of services, including CNC and PCB services. And I'll be back with a new project pretty soon. Peace out.